Hi, I'm Stephen Majors with the Alliance for Regenerative Medicine. I'm joined today at ARM Studios by Keith Gottesdiener, who's the CEO of Prime Medicine. Keith, welcome to ARM Studios. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Great. So let's start off. Tell us about uh, Prime Medicine, how it got its start, uh, and what the technology is trying to do. Well, thanks for the question. Prime Medicine is about four years old. It's based on a new gene editing technique called Prime Editing. It's the reason the company was formed. Prime Editing is this amazing approach where we could go in and we could into the into people's bodies and we could actually correct their genome. So in the case of working with rare genetic diseases, what we're doing is we're going in, finding mutations or problems that people have, and in the process, we're correcting them back to normal. We hope someday to be able to call that a genetic cure. Great. And so this is something that can work potentially for rare disease, but also more prevalent diseases as well that have more complex causes? Absolutely. Right now, most of our work is in rare genetic diseases. They have the advantage that we know exactly what the problem is in the DNA, and therefore we know exactly how to target our corrective um, efforts overall. But there are many diseases you pointed out that are more general, more broad spread, that have a genetic basis. So the example I like to use, for example, is Alzheimer's disease. We don't exactly know the cure of Alzheimer's disease, but we do know is there are certain mutations that occur in that disease that increase people's risks of getting Alzheimer's disease, let's say 20 fold greater. And we know exactly what we could do to go in, correct those mutations, those risk factors, bring them back to normal, and in the process really decrease really the risk that these unfortunate patients have or yet soon to be patients have to get Alzheimer's disease. So there are many places that you could really use a very powerful technique. That's fantastic. And so tell us about your pipeline. Where are you starting off initially and where do you hope to go ultimately? So we started out with a very, very broad pipeline back in 2020 when the company was formed. The idea was to try in many different locations, many ways of getting prime editing machinery into the body, many different types of diseases. and. We expected that some of those potential ways of using prime editing would be a little harder than others and there'd be some natural attrition. So the good news is, is that in fact, prime editing works in all of those and has been working quite effectively. So no attrition's occurred. So we've had to, shall we say, focus the pipeline a little bit because no company our size could really bring 18 programs towards the clinic. Currently we're working in lung, in liver, also in what we call hematopoietic tissues, the lineages of your blood. And there are other places we're working as well, but there's six or seven programs we're moving to the clinic. Great. And so let's talk about uh, delivery as well. Obviously, delivery is a challenge for gene therapies, being able to deliver the right amount of cargo where it needs to go. Talk to us about delivery challenges or opportunities specifically related to prime editing and how those, those editing mechanisms get delivered properly. Well, the good news has been, as I mentioned, we tried 18 programs, and one of the parameters that we varied among programs were different delivery methods. So there are three today that are used very commonly. You can take cells out of the body, like hematopoietic stem cells from your blood lineages, edit them out of the body and put them back. You can use a technique called LMP, lipid nanoparticles, in fact, to deliver these days mostly to the liver. And you can use AAV, which are used most commonly in gene therapy approaches, where you're trying to replace a gene, but not in the genome, or not to do a correction. But we can also use them as well. Prime editing works with each and every one of those approaches. Again, a bit of a surprise how easy it was to adapt it to each of them. So we have the ability to use different delivery methods for different tissues. Now, unfortunately, they still don't cover the gamut of the places you like to get gene editing machinery to. We still can't reliably get to the brain, for example, or to the heart. But those are places where I think over the next couple of years, it's very, very likely we will solve those problems. Great. Well, that's a great place to stop. Keith, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you as well.